Interrompemos esse podcast para perguntar quem você quer ser? Designer. Engenheira. Pedagoga. Administrador. Quer saber? O Senac EAD é a nota máxima no MEC. Tem cursos de diversas áreas, com conteúdo elaborado por especialistas do mercado e professores mestres e doutores. Ainda tem o Senac Carreiras, conectando estudantes a vagas de emprego em todo o país. Saiba mais em iad.senac.br graduação. Quem é Besouro Suco? Nunca diga esse nome, ouviu? Besouro Suco. Eu tô falando muito sério. Se disser o nome dele três vezes, coisas ruins vão acontecer. Tipo o quê? Besouro Suco. Besouro Suco. Besouro Suco. <risos> o suco tá soltinho. Em 5 de setembro. Vambora com isso? A espera... Partiu, novinha. Acabou. Queremos agradecer a presença de todos nessa ocasião especial. Eu senti bem aqui. Eco. Garanta seu ingresso. Verifique a classificação indicativa. Hey, man. I just got this great script. That's awesome, Nick. I'm so glad for you. Things are really taking off for you, man. You're doing really well. I, I, Peggy Sue is married. I just did. You didn't even want to do that one either. I didn't want to do it, but I did it. But this script, it's called Vampire's Kiss. Oh, that sounds intriguing. Kind of sexy. You've never done anything like the horror, have you? Never done horror, but I really want to do something different. I want to do a different kind of like a voice, like a different character for this role. Oh, you show your range. Good, I like it, I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, let's... Throw one out, let me hear what you got. Okay, okay, hold on. <clears throat> I'm a vampire! Well, what do you think? Okay, okay. Give me give me another one, what else you got? You, I mean, oh, you gotta show me range. I got lots, I got lots, I got lots. Okay, <clears throat> okay. I'm a vampire! Ah, oh, quiet, quiet, whispery and mysterious. I like that. Yeah. Mysterious. You got anything else? Sexy. Yeah, no. Sexy yeah. as hell. Sexy, mysterious vampire. What else do you got? Okay, okay, okay. Oh my god, I'm a vampire. Is it aristocratic? I like it. I'm gonna tell you what, Nicholas. Gonna, yeah, you, hit me. Take hit my, me. I trust me. You're okay. gonna want to do this. Okay. It's gonna blow people's minds. Yeah. Those accents, uh huh, do them all. And that's, that's when the, the money rolls, rolls in. in. You know when I pick a movie, that's when I'm under pressure now. The question always comes back to me what will they think? Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another episode of What Were They Thinking? I'm Brendan. And I'm Nathan. And we are talking about a very uh, important film. Uh, in hipster culture, maybe. I don't know. An important film in the K-geography. T- to, yeah... Some people, I guess. I mean, we've covered Snake Eyes. Uh, yeah, that yeah. was that was Cage's, I think, uh, insanity comeback. And <laughs> this week we're covering a movie where he kind of, it, kind of the very beginnings of that insanity, because this is from nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, uh, we're covering Vampire's Kiss. Now we are not doing this alone. No, we are not, because misery loves company. Exactly. <laughs> We've got two of our guests back, uh, and they're actually doing right now a Nicolas Cage-themed month on their podcast, so what better <laughs> excuse to have Steve and Izzy from Everything I Learned from Movies welcome. Hey, everybody. Hello. <gasps> Peter Lowe, I didn't know you were here. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just here to celebrate Nick August Cage. <laughs> And it begins. And for the first time ever, Nathan, we have a live audience. We do, yes. Uh, my friend Mike uh, is joining me in studio here. Uh, he, I, he says he thinks he's seen the movie, but he's not sure. And just um, to give you an idea of the planning of this, we it happened about three minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mike showed up. But hey, you know what? This is the first for our podcast. Uh, this podcast was recorded in front of a live studio audience. Yeah. 
You can say hello, Mike, because we Bye. have introduced you. Yeah. Hey, Magic Mike. <laughs> hey, what's going on? <laughs> 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 So this movie, Vampire's <laughs> Kiss, Nicolas Cage. I go, I, before you get started, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind. This is the first time I've ever seen this movie. Yeah. What? What? Never seen it before. I mean, well, let, let's just take a step back about blowing anyone's mind about not seeing this movie. Because, yes, while, you know, it may have appeared on several podcasts, cough, cough, uh, guests included, um, this movie was made on a budget of $2 million. <laughs> Do you uh, venture to guess what this movie made at the box office? I preclude myself because I saw it earlier today. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing pretty uh, much twenty grand. <laughs> well, no, it did better than that. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. It made seven hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars and uh, sorry, seven hundred and twenty-five thousand one hundred and thirty-one dollars exactly. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> well, that's eighties money, so that's like. 20 Two mil today? million, yeah. man. Yeah, so not even half the budget. So this movie definitely was not a known thing at the time. Nobody went and saw this in theaters, but it has definitely grown a cult following. Vampire's Kiss. This is a bananas. This is a the top of the chart of bananas movies. This it's, is bonkers. Yeah. This is Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage starting to hone in on how to perfect <laughs> acting. Yeah. I just the thing is when he does stuff like this, I it, I almost feel like he should have to give back an Oscar. What? <laughs> what? Wait, Nathan, you're you're an actor of stage and or screen, correct? Yes, yes. And yet you don't appreciate Nicolas Cage? Man, I okay, I appreciate what he was doing and going for in this movie. But the- and stop. All right, perfect. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> you kind of have to, because for the most part, my it, this movie <laughs> does kind of leave me speechless a lot of the time. Well, it's to for a crazy movie, we kind of start out with the least interesting opening credit sequence of all time. Oh, like a million years of B roll, <laughs> just architecture, <laughs> building, yeah. building, yeah. building, building, building. <laughs> But but that architecture, man! If you're if you, if that's your fetish, you're getting off right then. Just, oh, yeah. oh, oh, is that a worse sister? <laughs> Empire State Building opening credit cum shot. I get it. N- never forget. <laughs> but we find, oh. but we soon meet. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Lee funny. <laughs> but we soon meet Nicolas Cage by way of Zoolander slash White Goodman from Dodgeball. Did you actually, during that terribly boring opening credit sequence, did you happen to notice that this movie was written by a minion? No. <laughs> yes, particularly a David minion, I think his name was. Oh, David is my favorite minion. Yeah, it's better than Stuart. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen a single Despicable Me or Minions movie, thankfully. You uh, are missing out, sir. I am not. No, you are. Even Steve watched a Minion movie with me. We're all cracking a <laughs> That's night, what I thought. Eh? That's the like kind of movie spirit. this is. <laughs> I never appeared in the history of beer openings. So, Nicolas Cage, right off the bat, he's talking to his therapist, played by Elizabeth Ashley. Mm-hmm. Who's she? She is... She did, a lot of, she did a lot of stage plays, I think, for the most part. She was on Evening Shade. Oh, okay. So, she stage gone. plays. Yeah. <laughs> Evening Shade on stage. <laughs> I've seen her in movies before. I know I have. Yeah. And she hosted an episode of Saturday Night Live in the 80s. <laughs> so there you go. She had what? to have done something to get on there. Yeah. And she did someone. <laughs> but <laughs> she is playing his uh, his therapist. He's talking to her about a woman. Basically, he's he's having a hard time understanding the concept of a one night stand. <laughs> Because he's like, I wanted her so bad, this woman, and then I fucked her, and then I didn't want her anymore. <laughs> and I wanted her to leave. The psychology of a one night stand is basically what this is. Yeah. Um, and she explains that to him quite succinctly. And this is the thing with the with the voice. We got to talk about this voice that he's doing because I believe that Ben Stiller watched this movie for inspiration. For Zoolander, yeah. he yeah. had to have. 
There were several times in this movie, because of the mashy accents he was doing, also mashy accents, the name of my next band, (laughs) because of those, there were several times I had to wind it back or I just couldn't understand him at all. (laughs) Uh, Nicolas Cage is one of those like you know uh, stereotypical 80s yuppie type you know Mm -hmm. live fast play hard very Patrick Bateman yeah, very, very I've got Patrick serious Bateman. vibes of like American Psycho. If someone had to rewrite it after being after suffering a blunt force trauma to the head, well, actually, this came out before American Psycho. Oh yeah, like twelve years before. No, like no, I mean the the book before the book. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, like the book was like ninety one. Okay. Uh, so there you go. Inspired millions. <laughs> I. <laughs> Oh, do you think Brady Stanellis watched Vampire's Kiss and was like, you know, if he could touches, do it better, we've really got something going here. <laughs> I think Nathan was right. <laughs> <laughs> so Cage, is, Cage, Cage then goes out to the bars that night. He's now, smooth talking to a lady. Uh, they walk out. I wrote down that he's doing some fantastic foreplay. Did anybody? Eh? Go- eh? He talks about the ela- the rubber man, the elastic man, eh, hey, Mr. Fantastic, yeah? I'm just going to let him keep winking yeah, as hard as he Not a dry can. panty in the house. He's going to things. What is he going to talk about next? The human torch in his pants? Eh? Oh, he's denied a bank loan. How to get burned? Uh, <laughs> that did not happen in this movie. Now, am I the... I mean, did you guys notice a Stevie Wonder lookalike behind <laughs> Nicolas Cage? <laughs> Yeah, it showed him like three times or whatever when the band was playing at the bar. It was I, I couldn't focus on what Nick Cage and the the people who I was supposed to be paying attention to were saying because all I could see was Stevie Wonder at the club. Well, and I don't know if this speaks to the low budget because $2 million, you know, fairly low budget for a movie like this. But I thought the audio was mixed really poorly as well yeah i could like i said i can't understand a goddamn thing he's saying yeah in the, in the, no, especially setting the scenes. atmosphere for a bar in new york have you guys never been in a bar i mean you know, I know movie, canadian bars are different hear the dialogue but when there's like a live band you don't need to hear the dialogue if you hear the dialogue of nicholas cage pulling some sweet tail like jackie then <laughs> you're like no that's not realistic at all i mean <laughs> Well, that's but, what but, that's what I mean. When you do hear it, it does not sound realistic at all. Yeah, well, it's, well, you're catching the tail end of it. Like he's already secured earlier, and now he's just like, you know, I'm drunk, random things out of my mouth. So, so I'm gonna say something that might blow people's minds. It, it, you might already know this. I'm sure we you do, but um, most of the extras are not extras. Most of them <laughs> are just people that are hanging out. <laughs> um, the other thing is, this was a non-union shoot. So apparently, according to the director, just off camera, we had there are, there were people loudly protesting, and apparently some of that audio is mixed in a little bit. <laughs> hmm. Huh. So there's there's some there's some tension already on set. Do um, you think it's kind of odd in '89 that Nick Cage would be doing a non-union flick? I mean, is do, I I. I never question anything that guy does. <laughs> so every yeah. every decision he makes, every decision checks out. You guys clearly haven't seen two eleven. Oh yes, we have. Oh god. <laughs> Currently streaming on Netflix. <laughs> so Nicholas Cage is uh, they 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 <laughs> tell a cab driver to be gone. Yeah, because they're gonna spend they're gonna walk home, and he's of course he's having drunk sex with this girl. But the window is open, and a bat flies in. Oh, my God. And Nicholas... Another little tidbit here. An interesting tidbit, because it's a tidbit that's interesting. It's because it's an interesting tidbit. That's right. Uh, I feel like I've heard something like that before. Ah, it's in your ah. imagination. Izzy, does that ring yeah. a bell? S- something similar, but probably a lot better. Mm. No, nowhere's near as catchy. Not as oh. Canadian, though. Oh, I'm sorry. What was your interesting tidbit? Because we have a fun fact. Uh, a fun fact, a super fun fact, because it's a fun, fun fact. Oh boy, the battle begins. <laughs> the interesting tidbit is that Nicolas Cage wanted a real bat for this scene, and he fought hard for a real bat to come in and actually bite him. Oh my To, to which the director said, if we do that, you may die. To which Nicolas Cage says, and your point is... 
<laughs> or he may become a vampire. He's a very method actor. Oh That's right. God. So the bat flies in. Uh, we don't actually see the bat bite him. We just see them get rid of the bat. Right? Yeah. <laughs> shoo, shoo, shoo. Shoo. Literally says shoo to the bat. <laughs> well, what else are you going to say? Yeah, be gone. I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> shoo Excel doesn't C-O-R. do anything. It's not going to work. It's a bat. It so, doesn't know English. Um, th- while this is happening, uh, Jackie, is her name Jackie? Yeah. Jackie stumbles out of the apartment, like covering herself up with a blanket. Uh, t- <laughs> A little kid sees her, and I, I wrote down that he's going to have one hell of a story for uh, show and tell tomorrow. Right? I said that kid just just had his sexual awakening. <laughs> yep. Welcome to puberty, my boy. Yeah. But instead of, uh, like for Nathan, instead of uh, Jack A, it was Jackie. Right. Yeah. Uh, my, my fun fact actually is about Jackie, uh, played by Casey Lemons, well-known mm-hmm. actress. You may know oh, her from, uh, she, well, she played Detective Mitchell in Hard Target, uh, she's been in a bunch of movies, early 90s, that you've probably seen. Currently a director, though, and uh, she has a new movie coming out in a month or so. What's that, Steve? Oh, well, it's that movie Harriet about the Harriet Tubman story. Oh, snap. I'm sorry, yes. did this be just become everything I learned from movies? But I just thought it was a, a fun fact, a super fun mm. fact, because, well, it's, it's a, a fun, fun, fun fact. fact right? I don't know, yeah. but it's tidbit status, though. Is it? Is it an interesting tidbit? Hmm... I'll have to... Uh, Is it a tidbit that's interesting? I'll, ha- I'll have to file it with HR. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you guys know. I love uh, Nicolas Cage's um, fake movie laugh in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> After this whole ordeal, Nicolas Cage uh, goes to work where he is a... Uh, what, it, liter- literary agent? Yeah. Is that what he is? Okay. I, I just wrote raving son of a bitch. He isn't. Uh, it's called manager. <laughs> Asshole. He meets, uh, we, we meet his, uh, one of his employees named Alva, played by Maria Conchita Alonso. From the uh, Running she... Man. <laughs> From the Running Man, as Nathan said. <laughs> yeah, Running Man, Predator 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, they have a really loving relationship. A real nice, uh, <laughs> it's a real Romeo and Juliet situation. It will be there. <laughs> and he's basically like, I need you to find a very specific file from a long time ago for this for this client we have. Isn't that that part is not important? He just wants her to find a file. And keep that in mind because that runs through the entire film. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also wrote that at this point, because of the Bat thing, I was like, this would totally be the Batman movie that Nick Cage would write as an origin story. <laughs> But he wanted to be Superman. <laughs> yeah, but this would be his Batman movie. <laughs> Fair. And then a bat bites me while I'm fucking a girl! That, that, that's <laughs> not how Batman that originated, Nick. Um, and then I yell at a file clerk! Well, then a, bat, then a bat bites me while I'm fucking a little boy named Robin. What? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> ooh, Nick. Uh, ooh, sodomy. Jeffrey Epstein's on board to produce. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's going to be a Clinton Trump production. So, <laughs> so after he's yelling at Alva and basically makes her very uncomfortable, he uh, has another visit with his therapist. Well, um, just when he went back to the, the apartment and he's looking around for the bat and he's kind of scared about it. I just what just call an exterminator. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, for oh, sure. Senior okay. money bags. Mm. <laughs> uh, he was a hey, literary. He's agent. a literary. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And he can employ the kind of tale that you know helped Arnold Schwarzenegger bring down society in the future. <laughs> so just let that sink in. So Nick Cage goes back to his therapist. <laughs> Uh, he says, uh, he, he talks, he talks to her about the bat and says, when the bat flew in, I got really horny. (laughs) Like the bat aroused him. Uh, so there's that. And I, and I think that we can all agree that Nicolas Cage being aroused by a bat is probably the least surprising thing in this movie. Yeah. (laughs) He described, it was, it was a new, a new feeling. Yeah. Were you, were you excited? I guess so. Yeah. Well, you know, you you were just you know about to consummate with a woman, so it's it's natural. No, no, it was totally the bat. It was all. It was after way. she yeah. left, though. The bat was still there, and I got I got really excited. Oh. You were already excited. No, no. 
<laughs> well, that's why you're putting my kids through college, so continue. <laughs> so back to Alva. She still hasn't found that damn file. <laughs> Nicholas Cage has started his, uh, his y- series of yelling fits towards her. Yes. Again, like, Nathan, what did you say? Blue vein idiot? Blue vein son of a bitch? Blue veined dick. Yeah, like, and this is, this is really, like, the start of it. Um, we also get a very quick David Hyde Pierce cameo. I did not notice that. It's super quick. Like, right after this, he's in the, uh, he's in another bar. That's where he meets up yes. with, like, Jennifer Beale's character. And right. at the very beginning of that shot, there's a guy just, like, talking to a woman, and it's totally David Hyde Pierce as an extra. I even, I looked yeah. it up to confirm, and it is indeed him. Okay. Yeah, I think he's I think he's like theater guy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, theater guy. Yeah. He has literally no lines and I was like, "Wait, he's just an extra? Why did they even credit him?" <laughs> because he was a paid extra. I mean, but he didn't have lines. Wait, <laughs> all, extra, all extras are all official extras are paid, Steve. Yes. Well, yeah, but we were just talking about how there were so many unpaid extras. Those weren't extras. Spoiler Those alert. Were people in this walking movie, by. We're, at the end of it, we're going to hit a whole bunch of unpaid extras. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we'll get to that. Don't worry. <laughs> and somebody was like, "See that guy there, the one not talking? Get him on Frasier. <laughs> so, so, get him a sitcom stat." <laughs> so Cage is there with a bunch of his buddies, and they're talking shop, right? Yeah, and he's kind of bored. Yeah, he's bored. He want, he would rather fuck Jennifer Beals. I mean, relatable. And who wouldn't? Yeah. All right. No shit. <laughs> most. <Ooh>. That's, <laughs> that's the most relatable he he is in this movie in this scene right here. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't I know you from The Bride? <laughs> oh my god nobody knows her from the bride except you two uh if you haven't seen the bride starring sting as dr frankenstein and jessica beals as the bride and clancy brown as the monster oh there's also a midget watch it i didn't know the sting the wrestler was in a movie about frankenstein oh no even better, the other Sting. <laughs> I was going to say, did Steve Borden film the Frankenstein movie and then defeat Hulk Hogan at Starcade? Hey, you know what, Brendan? Yeah? Wrestling reference done. Boom! And Steve, and Steve instigated it. Yeah, good job, Steve. Nice. I, I'm working on it. I my, my knowledge of wrestling only goes to about 1993, but... Or, or, uh, oh, you're good. Or the you're horribly good. tragic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, stuff that makes the news, but it's not, okay? Uh, so Moving on. He takes Jennifer Rando Beals home. Yeah, and it soon turns out, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure it doesn't turn out. But to Nicolas Cage's perspective, it turns yeah. out that Jennifer Beals has sharp fangs and she bites Cage's neck. She is a vampire. She's a vampire. And Still worth it. <laughs> well... <laughs> Except Given that they never have sex because they both keep their underwear on. She actually no, she wears pasties, like uh, the breast breast pad covers. She is, yes, yeah, but she's wearing her her bottom panties. And Nicolas Cage is wearing his shirt and his boxers. <laughs> right, I think he still got his belt on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, now I've also heard that these two did uh, did not get along very well. <laughs> that might be why she's wearing the press <laughs> coverings. Yeah. Wait, wait. Let me let me let me let me let me do a fair bit of acting here real quick. What? And then, Nicolas Cage also said, "I was probably not an easy person to be around at the time." <laughs> what? <laughs> was not? Yeah. Not is I am not. I... He is an absolute treasure. You guys calm down. I don't know. I've heard stories from people who met him that he's very intense, but very... Uh, Eccentric. Nice guy. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I've heard, too. All, all the people we've interviewed who've worked with him said he was wonderful to work with, and yeah, that he gets, just gets very into the project. Yeah. Mm. Well, so yeah. Can't fault uh, him for having passion. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, two times in this movie, she's supposed to be topless with him Mm -hmm. and you can see like the breast pad covers that she's wearing to make sure absolutely sure you don't see her nipples see i was looking for them okay and i didn't (laughs) see the breast pad so i'm surprised yeah 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 me neither but but also you say you say they were together two times i'm pretty sure it was the same shot for both times oh yeah yes okay okay i just wanted to make sure because i i I didn't really realize that till this time i'm like oh oh this 
DVD skit? What, what's going on? <laughs> it was supposed to be a different time, but yeah, that's absolutely loop around. So as she's uh, she's biting his neck and drinking his blood, as a vampire does... In the um, 80s, and she's 80s. totally not catching anything that's possibly a plague overrunning America at the time. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> um, so the next morning, <laughs> Nicolas Cage is making coffee, but we can clearly see that there is no one in the bed that he's giving coffee to. Right. Uh, he, is, uh, he thinks he's talking to her. So this was when I first noted, <laughs> do you think that because he, he's seeing a therapist yeah. and he's clearly imagined her being with him that night. Do you think he is a paranoid schizophrenic or suffering from undiagnosed syphilis? <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, Why are you guys um, laughing? At, at like this point, Freud. I'm going to go with schizophrenia. However, later I, in the movie, definitely syphilis. Yeah, because I'm I'm legitimately asking because those are two very possibilities as to why the following, e.g., the movie happens. Can it be both? It could be untreated syphilis along with paranoid schizophrenia. You are correct. Okay, it's a slippery slope, my friend. It's all brain rot anyway. There you go. <laughs> all, all brain, brain rot. rot anyways. Yep. Thank you, uh, audience. Aww. So anyway, the next so after he delivers coffee to uh, the invisible Jennifer Beals, um, mm-hmm. he goes to a museum with Jackie, the first girl he fucked, and yes. in the middle of it, he's like, "She's like, oh, what do you think about all this?" He's like, I gotta go take, I gotta go take a piss, and then he just ditches the date <laughs> and heads home, and then it leads to one of my favorite lines, one of my favorite deliveries in the movie. He's laying on the couch. She leaves him a voicemail. She realizes uh, she's been stood up, and she's like, "You fuck, fuck you!" And he just goes, "Yeah, well, fuck you too, sister." Yeah, well, fuck you too, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Even better than Elizabeth Berkeley's. <laughs> Fuck off, fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fuck off. F- fucker, fuck off. Or, or let's fuck not forget off, the taxi drivers. Yeah. Fuck you, you fucking fuck. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> New uh, York City. This podcast is now absolutely rated R because we've oh we've said fuck a million times. There now. is a reason for the E on this ep- on every <laughs> single episode. <laughs> I always thought it stood for excellent. Uh, Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Yeah, yeah, come on. Video games E is rated for everyone. Well, I I don't control uh the uh, the Apple podcast. E is for ratings. excrement. <laughs> so anyway, um he goes back to the therapist Nicolas Cage does and she brings up the thing about the bat making him horny. And he's like, "I don't recall saying that. I must have been I must have been drunk and I was pretty keyed up at the time." And then he says, "Plus I was horny." <laughs> So he was drunk and horny. So he goes back to the office. He it gets a call from their client about that missing file. Alva still hasn't found that file. Well, actually, he's he's reaming her out. Yeah. And saying that I'm going to have to do this song and dance to our client because he's so upset. He wants this. He needed this contract last week. And then he gets on the phone. Not on speakerphone. No. But he's like, hey, how you doing, Peter? Yeah, no big rush on that, man. Just whenever's. Just an absolute sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. No song and dance required at all. No, but he does get off the phone and say, I couldn't get a word in edgewise. That's how mad he is. Yeah. He does uh, like a rock star point. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) He tells her to go find the file. Like he just points up in the air like, go find the file. (laughs) Am I getting through to you? Alva! Alva! That's the line. Thank you. Um, So, at this point, Cage, uh, after he has a freak out in a greasy restaurant, because he, he's not getting service. He, Is that uh, not the uh, the same setting that where Mary Jane worked in the second Spider-Man movie? <laughs> exact same place. Possibly. I think so. Well, this is it the looks what the were thinking verse, so it's all connected. Oh, Although right. we haven't done the second Spider-Man and will not because that's actually a good one. <laughs> but Amazing Spider-Man it, 2. I was going to say Amazing Spider-Man notice. 2 may be coming up soon on another <laughs> podcast because that movie is horseshit. <laughs> wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not 
that bad. It's not Spider-Man 3 bad. Uh, Jamie Foxx? It's not Spider-Man 3 bad. You know what? Well, maybe that'll be our episode. Which is worse, Spider-Man 3 or Amazing Spider-Man 2? We haven't done Spider-Man which is 3. worse is in a very long time. Spider-Man 3. Right. Spider-Man, Spider-Man 3. 100%, 100% Spider-Man 3. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Spider-Man 3. Uh, Cole DeHaan. Okay, guys, Dane, Dane I have got a, I've got a real big name? question at this point. This, this is something... What were they thinking? No, See you later, folks. No, no. no. <laughs> oh. um, so Nick Cage is, like, holding his neck in pain, and he's, like, running around, and, you know, he he's goes back to his apartment. There are two mimes outside of his apartment. Yes, I and have they, that note. They are having a slap fight. <laughs> and I just want to mention right now... Um, the, now apparently the, the, there's some, there's some things I read from the commentary track. Cause apparently the director and Nick Cage do a commentary on this movie. Oh and, my God. Yeah. So the director's comment on this mime scene, he literally says, and I quote, I don't know what this is about. I don't know what I was doing. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> so no explanation at all. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's the mimes. There's a guy in the apartment building that has, like, a feather in his hat. Like, he looks like he's dressed like a pimp or something. Yeah. Cage is just freaking out. He calls up Jackie, and he's like, look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stand you. I didn't mean to stand you up. I want to meet up again. I'm, let, let, give me another chance. And she's like, okay, fine. She gives him another chance. But ghost jennifer beals is back yes <laughs> ghost beals uh, vampire jennifer beals imaginary jennifer beals ghost vampire jennifer beals is she imaginary though because late anyway we'll get to it later um yes so as a human being she exists vampire <laughs> beals is yeah, it's a, a concoction of Nicolas Cage's syphilitic yes. brain. Yes, right. based on a woman he met once. Okay, so does he sleep with human Jennifer Beals? No. 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 No, she's the one he couldn't get, and therefore he becomes, she becomes, like, the object of his, like, fascination and obsession. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I buy that. So they're going at it again, and uh, because of this, Jackie has been stood up at the bar, and she's like, okay, I'm fucking done, that's it, that's the end. And she Eat leaves. Dicks, Nick Cage. Bye, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie. Mm. I no, yeah, wouldn't have left her behind. Yeah, she was great. <laughs> right. The next day, though, guys, we have a truly epic moment. Cage is freaking out, looking for that file. Alva <laughs> jumps up on her desk. I actually was expecting him to ask for Simon and Theodore as well. Yes, yeah. that's what I wrote down too. I wrote he he yelled it like. The chipmunks, the chipmunks. Yeah, like Dave from the chipmunks. Yeah, but he jumps up on her desk, points to her, chases her all the way down the hall into the women's washroom. At which point, (laughs) some old woman walks by and does a very under reaction to it. She, yeah, and then stares at the camera too. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she she stares right down the barrel of the of the camera. I don't uh, think she was I, supposed to be in this movie. Well, she she was in the next scene, though, too. Yeah. Which I, I just noticed for the first time. But I think it was an ode to Fellini, the way she was staring down the barrel of the camera. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 1,000%. <laughs> but she, yeah, she just walks by and she's like, what are you doing in here? <laughs> anyway, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. And, and Nick Cage stops himself. And it's at this point in the movie where I really got the full appreciation of the bowl cut he has in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. You could do an entire podcast on just Nick Cage hairstyles. You absolutely could. <laughs> Con Air would be a two-parter. Ooh, <laughs> Con Hair, that's the name of the podcast. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> that's our Nicolas Cage-based podcast, only Nicolas Cage Base movies. But it's just another day at the office for Nicolas Cage chasing women into the ladies' washroom. Uh, so he's... So that... <laughs> crazily, after that, it turns out that all the executives are probably as crazy as he is. Yeah. I thought that <laughs> no, was it's just that HR and sexual harassment laws were a total joke in 1989. But he's like, can you believe it? Chasing her into the woman's washroom and she wants a raise. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you should probably fire this unhinged maniac. 
that everyone that everyone saw chase a person down the hall <laughs> into a washroom. I mean, I know, yeah, it's sexual harassment, but there's there's a uh, there's a line between uh, sexual harassment and chasing someone down a hall into a washroom, and that's for the courts to decide. <laughs> and they did. In the un uh, the uncut version, he actually goes. There's a 20 minute courtroom scene at this point, and then we come back to the movie <laughs> because he so, got away with it. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's why we still have to come back. That's why we really continue the movie. I'm going with your basis. So at this point, Cage gets a note from Jackie to stay out of her life. I, how does he get that note? Like, she like puts it under his door or something? No, it's like a, she writes it on like a cocktail napkin and tapes it to his mailbox. Right, right, yeah. right. Well, because he's, I mean, he's in an apartment building. Like She's only going to yeah. be able to get into the lobby. Come on, guys. And, and he tears is... it up and has the most Nicolas Cage reaction ever. Yeah, he absolutely destroys <laughs> every piece of furniture in that room, which, uh, interesting tidbit. Because it's a tidbit that's interesting. Right. Some of that stuff was not part of the props. So some of the stuff that he destroyed <laughs> was just oh. the stuff that was in the room. So the director is like apparently having a little bit of a panic attack behind the camera being like, well, he better get it in this one take. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and thankfully, one take cage was on full display. That's right. Academy yeah. Award winner, Nicolas Cage. Oh, it's glorious. <laughs> one but, click, Nick. <laughs> one click. I love that. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt. There you go. So he, yeah, he just destroys all this, all this, all this furniture in the house. Meanwhile, for some reason, we're cutting to Alva on the subway, giving like money to a homeless person. I'm like, we, I know she's a good person. We don't need to like drive it home that much. Well, we, you do have. It's not that. That it's just we're also driving home the fact that she lives somewhat of an unsafe life, and True. Nicolas Cage just made it that much more unsafe. Well, and we should note, too, at, at this point, we've already found out that she does carry a gun with her. Just before we continue on, Mike is sitting here on his goddamn phone looking up Nicolas Cage poses on, like, Pinterest. And he keeps showing them to me to try to crack me up. <laughs> That's weird, is he's doing the exact same thing. They must what? be buddies. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, he makes her life that much more unsafe. Yeah. Because not only is she taking the train home, the Pelham train home, which apparently is a very bad train to take. Well, there was a whole movie made about it. Right. Well, and they took the one, two, three train. Exactly. And went to Pel- right. So not only that, now she has to deal with the prospect that she, her boss is a rapist. Not yet. <laughs> soon. Coming soon. <laughs> She's afraid that he's going to get violent with her. He's yeah. a rapist with a they rapist. Hey. <laughs> okay, that's it. Shutting the podcast down. <laughs> uh, so that's when we broke him. <laughs> <laughs> so after this, we get a very infamous scene. So Nicholas Cage goes to his therapist, and he. Uh, I mean, he goes to the rapist. He, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> oh, he goes. To, he goes so to the rapist. He goes to Elizabeth Ashley. And the rapist. He, no, he goes to his therapist. <laughs> and yeah, that's what I said. He's talking about um, he's talking about the the thing with Alva where she can't find this file and it wasn't filed correctly. And how I'm just does gonna... somebody miss file? Well, yeah, and we're gonna play a little bit of that. Okay. So this is Nicolas Cage freaking out about why someone can't file something properly. I I feel his reaction is a bit strong. Let's take a listen. How could somebody misfile something? What could be easier? It's all alphabetical. You just put it in the right file according to alphabetical order. You know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z! Huh? That's all you have to do! Very good. You know your alphabet. I never misfiled anything! Not once, not one time! I'm sure that you didn't. Actually, it's Zed. (laughs) Well, Mm, That's so Canadian of you. And the rest of the world of me. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah Americans. Chew on that. <laughs> I bet that's because you guys yeah. you guys you guys learn your alphabet that is, metric. That that is our <laughs> that is our one flaw in our country is our pronunciation the of one. the twenty sixth letter of the alphabet. <laughs> that's the only problem well, with our Well country. said, Canuck. <laughs> yep. I mean you've got a great uh, you've got a great voting system, you've got a great Stable party in office. Genius. Stable G a totally stable, uh, the healthiest person on earth as your president. <laughs> God, I hope not. Oh, where is the single car car accidents I was promised by my shadow government? Steve, you promised. probably shouldn't say that. The uh, agents are showing up at your door right now. Are you kidding? <laughs> Nobody's coming up this fucking mountain. <laughs> it's the hippies. Get them down. <laughs> let's let's move on past the angriest episode of Sesame Street. Well, I should. I just wanted to note too that while he's doing that, he's doing like the Mick Jagger pose. Yes, the gesticulation that he does throughout this whole delivery is mind-boggling. Yeah, He's like if sure. you guys heard that clip, you need to seek out the video because the, his physical mannerisms are insane. It's amazing. <laughs> He's headstrong and cocksure. And I love how, <laughs> guys, arguably we're, I think we're at, the, at this point, we're more than halfway through the movie. And... They're, they they really need to have a character say he's so eccentric, as if we don't know at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like as if we're like, hmm, I wonder if he's supposed to be a little weird. <laughs> and it, this is the point where he essentially admits to Alva that he did mescaline at work. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, oh yeah, I tried it once when I was younger. And he's like, it's a crazy drug, right? Anyway, I'm gonna open up my eyes really wide and freak you out now. There is no one else in this entire office that I could possibly ask to share such a horrible job. You're the lowest on the totem pole here, Alva. The lowest. Do you realize that? Every other secretary who's been here has been here longer than you, Alva. Every one. And even if there was someone here who was here just one day longer than you, I still wouldn't ask that person to partake in such a miserable job as long as you were around. That's right, Alva. It's a horrible, horrible job. Sifting through old contract after old contract. I couldn't think of a more horrible job if I wanted to. And you have to do it. You have to, or I'll fire you. Do you understand? <laughs> it is at this point I also noted um, 2019 is actually a pretty good time to be an underling, it seems. <laughs> And uh, behind the scenes, Cage explains this scene on the commentary and says, so my only goal here with this scene acting wise is just to see how wide I can make my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Mission Method. accomplished. Greatest living actor. Yeah. Can do no wrong. This was 30 years ago, guys, and he was already figuring this yeah. shit out. He's only honed his craft from here. So uh, Nicholas Cage is uh, starting to lose his mind again, and he starting collapses. to well again, again. <laughs> he has a meltdown. Yeah, again. he has a meltdown. He collapses outside of a church. Uh, he crawls towards his phone when he gets home, but imaginary Jennifer Beale stops him, and she's like, you know, only pay attention to me. I'm all that matters right now. And so she bites him again. And, and they watch Nosferatu. <laughs> they watch Nosferatu. God, that uh, just. just but all right on the nose. <laughs> yeah. And then the next day he eats a live cockroach, which, uh, Nathan, what did you say before we went on there about that? Oh, that this is absolutely a, a prequel to Joe's apartment. <laughs> Was that the Dave Chappelle roach that he ate? <laughs> Possibly. I'm, well, his <laughs> grandfather, right? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's just it. Uh, how do you think Joe gets the apartment in the follow-up? <laughs> <laughs> right it just it goes it deteriorates from 1980 because after what happens with Nicolas Cage's apartment they never clean it up and it just keeps going downhill <gasps> oh my god this is amazing <laughs> right you, you this, I wasn't just making an offhand cockroach joke this yeah. depart this apartment deteriorates quite severely throughout <laughs> the rest of this movie Do you this think is that, canon this is wait, canon wait a second guys do you think that Okay, yes, the apartment deteriorates. Do you think after the old one moves in, um, when Joe arrives, it's just all the other cockroaches having a memoriam for their friend that Nick Cage ate? 
Well, so here's a, a interesting tidbit, an interesting tidbit that's very, this is very a tidbit interesting. That's, interesting. that's a tidbit that's interesting, yes. right. Um, Nicolas Cage did this scene 17 times. Wait, the cockroach? Mm-hmm. With 17 different crickets. I, re- I, thought, they only, I thought they only did the, the scene twice. Nope. He ate 17 cockroaches for this. He ate 17 cockroaches. Then they lied on the commentary track. Fun oh, fact. Wait. Maybe they tested 17 times because I think they only shot it twice. Because I remember they yeah. said I remember the, the they said that we we did two takes even though we ended up using the first take. <laughs> 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 Which I'm ge- I, I'm going to guess is the director being like fuck you Nick Cage. <laughs> at at which point Nicolas Cage left the commentary track not to return. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of like Joel Schumacher on that Batman and Batman and Robin commentary. <laughs> Have you ever listened to that? <laughs> of course no. not. An hour and forty-five minutes, approximately, into that commentary, Joel Schumacher like is defending the movie the whole time, and then there's a point where I think a car like drives into a restaurant or something, and Joel Schumacher's like, "Well, you know what? Um, I've said all I need to say," and then he just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> the last 30 minutes of the movie is just the of the commentary there's, is just the movie <laughs> there's no commentary at all no nope. fantastic <laughs> yeah joe most of the movie is just him being like i don't know why bat nipples are so bad i mean come on it's just bat nipples and it's like bat credit card of course he would have a credit card like come on guys it's not that bad <laughs> that's basically the commentary <laughs> everybody loves puns <laughs> uh so um alva is now getting concerned uh, for her safety, and she's checking on her gun. She calls in, well. She calls in sick first. Yes. And Cage goes to her house, stalks her to her house in wherever she's living. And, and here's where I st- I wrote down. I feel bad for Alva, but she hmm. needs to stop falling for Nick Cage. <laughs> like Nick Cage saying, "Oh, I'm so sorry," and she's like, "Well, okay." Like they, that happens like four times. He brought a pouch of soup with him. He also, every time he apologizes, seconds later, turns into a raving lunatic. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, you were saying, so she has to be dropped off at her brother's garage, which for the right. longest time, I thought that was her boyfriend. Because <laughs> they had a weird chemistry. They do have a weird chemistry. But, yeah. They're so close but she, she even says... To Nick Cage, my brother works at that station over there. Can we stop? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's also puking in the cab while she's asking to stop. Oh my god. <laughs> there is a later scene though where she's like hugging him when he's not wearing a shirt, and I thought their embrace was a little weird. Yeah. It didn't, so, it didn't feel very siblingy. If I, if we could get past the implied incest. Well, I mean, it's a it's a running theme, Nathan. We we we've talked about thrashing. <laughs> We have, we have. Can we get back to child murder? <laughs> hashtag. Coming next week. Hashtag, hashtag dog punching. Um, <laughs> so Never again. Never again. Hot <laughs> and dangerous. Dangerous. Got your heart in my side. Anyhow. Um, so, yeah. Did anybody notice that the gun, the, the hammer on the gun actually didn't have, like, a spot for the, your, like, a thumb grip? To pull the hammer back so you could fire the gun. I did not. I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do. I do know that uh, Nicholas Cage did want to shoot him, shoot himself in the mouth with blanks, though. Oh my god! <laughs> Which the director said, "No, this is the third time I'm going to say uh, something like this to you on this set. You, you will could fucking die." die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, yeah, so she she's like, give me give me bullets, like give me bullets, and the brother's like, well, no, I I only like I'm not gonna give you bullets. Come on, and she's like, fine, give me blanks. So he gives her blanks. She gets back in the cab, and they go uh, back to the job, back to work. And he's like, you know, fi- just find the file. It's fine. I'm totally not I just crazy. Paid fifty dollars to get you back here. Make it worth it. <laughs> yep, guys. It gets crazy here. Nicolas Cage goes into the washroom. Just at work. here, just this part. Just this part. here. This is where it gets this crazy. Is the only crazy part. Okay. He goes to the washroom at work, and he thinks he has no reflection. Oh Christ! Oh Christ! Where, where am I? Where am I? Where, where am I? Oh Christ! Where am I? I've become one. Where am I? 
earlier in the movie, they, they kind of obviously foreshadowed it, but he touches his reflection and acts like it burns him. That's not a thing with vampires, at least in vampire lore. No, that was more of a, uh, Mr. Cage, we're ready to shoot when you are. <laughs> <laughs> And I love that we see that he definitely has a reflection. I think that makes it even crazier to watch. That's yeah. the, you guys are missing the secret genius of this fucking movie. He no, I, is knocking God. it out of the fucking park. Because you see that he's go, absolutely going insane. But you're still questioning it the first couple times you're watching it. Because, you know, it's it's crazy. And I suppose Steve does make a a good point because he does. if if nick cage is it's supposed to be going crazy throughout his portrayal is spot spot on see see yeah nathan it sounds like you're agreeing with me so thank you i i agree that he got the uh the delivery down 100 percent I absolutely do. This movie is still a flaming pile of dog crap. Mr. Cage, please come on our podcast. We would love to talk to you. I will say this too right now. If anyone other than Nick Cage was in this movie, it would be the least interesting movie ever. Gary Busey. Okay, I take that back. If almost anyone but Nick Cage was in this movie, it would be the least interesting movie ever. Because uh, I think he is, the, he is the <laughs> fucking centerpiece because I, most of the people react to him like fairly normally <laughs> like for, yeah. the, for the amount that he's putting into it. We get a lot of like, he's like, I took mescaline and you get like, oh yeah, okay, I used to take that. Like, <laughs> I actually have, one of my notes here is, are there no like level people in this movie's universe? <laughs> like... If you encountered somebody doing the stuff that he did in real life, mm-hmm. would I mean you you would call authorities, would you not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 sweet, sweet Canadians. Having lived in San Francisco for eight and a half years, yeah. you just continue riding the train and don't make eye contact. Yeah, this isn't a train. This is a business. Are you guys telling me you've never worked with, like, a legitimate crazy person on your staff? No. Okay. Fair. There's 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 crazy Sean in IT, but this is a whole different level. Yeah. And, yeah, I do get the idea of taking the train and not paying attention to the crazy. I lived in Vancouver. So, I'm used to that. This is next level shit. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. But okay, I'm gonna for- throw this out there. I worked at Macy's. I got into a confrontation with one of my coworkers because he was a lazy sack of crap who wasn't worth anything. I told mm-hmm. him I would break a hobo's penis off and rape him with it if he didn't get back to work. He went to HR. HR asked me if that's what I said to him, and I said that sounds like something a crazy person would say. And he's the one who got s- switched floors. So we didn't have to work together anymore. So Izzy is Nicolas Cage <laughs> in this scenario is what I oh think she's trying to say. All right, let's she get back on. Let's get back on track. Gaslit an employee <laughs> into a transfer. That's okay. Let's... He ended up getting arrested a few months later for assaulting a, uh, p- a person in their car with his bike lock. And then it turned out that he had a bunch of warrants up in Oregon. So he got extradited up to Oregon to finish his prison term up there. Okay, so whoop, whoop, pulling the train back into sanity, and we're going to keep talking about the movie now. Let's leave these tales of the tenderloin behind. So Ooh, the tenderest of loins. Right. So Cage is losing his mind again. He's actually, he's in the office getting, uh, get, getting uh, bitten by Jennifer Beals at work now. And uh, Alva comes in, and she's like, Hey, I found the contract. I found it. Oh wait, what? That, what? That was Brit- yeah, that was British. That shouldn't have been British. <laughs> yes, I- Alva. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I found oh, you found the contract. <laughs> I found the oh, they- contract for you, Mister Lowe. <laughs> wait, are you an urchin from a Charles Dickens novel? <laughs> no, my name's Alva. I work for you. <laughs> 
So she finds the file, and Nicolas yes. Cage is like, you know what? It's too late. It doesn't even matter anymore. And he again starts to chase her down the hall. She finally is like, okay, I'm going to shoot you if you come any closer. And he's like, I want you to shoot me. Shoot me or you're fired. And so he threatens. He's like, she's like, don't come near me. He's like, I'm going to rape you, Alva. Um, well, there is a rape or at least almost rape. Um, there's sexual a assault. sexual assault. Sexual assault for sure. And But then, when, of course, when he's on top of her, he pictures her as Jennifer Beals. He grabs the gun. He tries to shoot himself in the mouth and says, and I quote, Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you said earlier that he had to be talked out of legitimately being shot with blanks. Yes. Because, and that's, that stands to reason, Nicholas Cage, but I actually have the note. He would still be hurt if they were blanks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah, that. that R.I.P. Brandon the, Lee. <laughs> yeah, well, and not, and not even just that. Like in the reality of would, the movie, he would be hurt or killed. Like e- even without the but guys, like, guys, guys. Wh- he's a vampire. <laughs> right. We're about to but find that out. <laughs> he's not. <laughs> but the yeah, the muzzle flare and the explosion would, at the very least, cause some severe trauma to his mouth. Right. Well, that's why yeah. his. A pronunciation of boo-hoo was more <laughs> Can you do that? give us some more of that steve and then he starts running down the street doing this i'm a vampire 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 i'm a vampire, I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. ladies and gentlemen i'm a vampire <laughs> The latest song sensation that's sweeping the nation. You say you just add a little, uh, nice little bass line to that. You got yourself a tune. We'll, we'll talk to uh, we'll talk to PJ. He'll get trade Voorhees in on this. Yeah. It'll be a huge hit. I would love that a shit. vampire's kiss rap. <laughs> but so he he uh, we we learned at this point. So he's going crazy. He's running through the streets. All again, these are not extras. These are people reacting in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> or not reacting. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's crazy because they thought that if they just filmed with people walking down the street, everyday people, and Nick Cage screaming and running down uh, the street, that people would, the reactions would be a lot more genuine. But the director even said they weren't reacting, which made it even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, just don't, like you said, Izzy, it's the, it's the subway train, or it's the train yeah. uh, uh, strategy. Just don't look at the crazy person. Don't look at the crazy person. They're not there. They're not there. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 ha- it's just New York. If you don't engage with them, you don't end up on the police report. Right? Just another day in New York. (laughs) But there's more prop destruction at this point. He's also got a makeshift coffin with an upside-down sofa. Oh my god, the couch coffin was... That was that was inspired. I, I love say. I love how when the light shines in, he's like, <sighs> and then he like slowly like backs himself up on the carpet underneath. The sofa. Yeah, just walks into it. Yeah. Um. So the next so the next day, Alva is understandably traumatized at this point. She is not getting out of bed and going anywhere near that uh, that job anymore. No. And her brother is like, okay, something's definitely up because I remember her talking about this crazy bo- this crazy boss he she had. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> Nicolas Cage is like, well, my fangs haven't come in yet. <laughs> <laughs> and in true 80s greed fashion, yeah. he skimps on the tea. Well, and can we just note the price, though? Nineteen ninety nine, but then for the good ones, but then in nineteen eighty eight money, it was three dollars and fifty cents for the cheapest looking plastic teeth I've ever seen. Yeah, but they were out of season. It wasn't Halloween. But nineteen eighty eight, three dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, that's crazy. It was also a specialty store. Well, mm-hmm. he did just drop fifty bucks on a taxi ride getting Alva back to work, and she didn't make it worth it at all. He uh, so at this point he's got these uh, he's got this plastic teeth in he's running around town he actually calls his therapist he calls Elizabeth Did Ashley. You no five 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 numbers. What? The phone numbers when he looked up the numbers in the phone book, 
because he at one point he's he's looking up uh in the phone book. I don't know if it was for his therapist or if it was for, um, it was the, trying to get... it was the brother looking up his, uh, Peter Lowe's address. Mm. Right. Sorry. When so, he was doing that, there was no five, five, five numbers. Well, I'm, I'm going to guess that they just used a real phone book. <laughs> I'm guessing they did too. So some guy named Peter Lowe in New York, got a shit ton of phone calls. Well, maybe not a shit ton because you know, $700,000. <laughs> he, he didn't get all. any because nobody saw this movie. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> he got them 20 years later and he was like, eh, who are you kids? <laughs> Do I sound like Nicholas Cage? Why is he Stan Lee's? Love child with Gilbert God. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Cage is Cage calls therapist. He's like, I need to go right now. I need to be there right now. Like he is the this is the this is the peak right now. He yeah. is just he is just he's peaking as it were. He's, a, he's the tippy top of crazy. And Elizabeth Ashley is busy boning some dude. So she's like, listen, seven thirty a.m. We can do it as early as that. And he's like, okay. So what well, do you she's do? She's banging when you're... her pull boy. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so what do you let's, do when let's, you're waiting? Let's skip this part over. She is banging her pull boy. Good for her. As one does. Nathan bangs yes. the pool boy, right, Nathan? Pardon me? Uh, what? I didn't I know he was pool. cheating on you, Brendan. <laughs> you, uh... Okay, I'm not going to comment on this. <laughs> Love it. Julio's suppleness is between him and I, all right? <laughs> we have an open relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So after the pool boy banging, uh, Nicolas Cage is walking around. And what do you do while you're waiting for your appointment with your therapist? Why, you go chasing pigeons. Yeah. Well, you know, you're hungry. Another great commentary moment here is Nicolas Cage goes on the commentary. He's like, I was so excited that I was able to catch up to these pigeons. Like, I, I, they, I was able to outrun them. It was crazy. And the director was like, oh, yeah, we didn't tell you on set, Nick, but we definitely drugged up the pigeon so you could catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike actually Mike made a point earlier uh, to me that Nick Cage started out a, as far as vampires goes what he's doing as one of Dracula's underlings oh like um, god I don't remember his name it's uh, Renfield Renfield there you yeah, go yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he eats the pigeon uh, and, and then, but uh, now guys now he has rabies damn it yeah. Nicholas Cage just wants to dance, you guys. Oh, God. Just dance. Can I ask? Now, <laughs> yeah, I've got a question about this. It's big time. Before that, like, you. this is, you really start to kind of notice here what he's starting to do with his body mannerisms. He's mimicking all the old vampire moves that you would have seen, like, the, the Bela Lugosi uh, movie and Nosferatu. Nosferatu, like he's hunching with his hands perched up. When he comes into the club, he kind of shuffles so it looks like he glides in to the crowd. <laughs> yeah, and he finds a young lady and bites her neck with these cheapo plastic fangs that somehow like just draws the most crazy amount of blood. Well, it is you know if if he was able to bite. And break the skin on, you know, that arterial vein that would it would spurt a bit. But I don't know that he would get through with those fangs. <sighs> it depends how dedicated he was. He was pretty dedicated. It would have made more sense to me maybe if he just like took well, them out and then did it, but it didn't make sense at the Well, and her fangs. neck was also very moisturized. <laughs> I also found it really odd that in a club that busy there was just this one random empty room <laughs> save for this one girl yeah i gotta clear everything out for the shot ladies and gentlemen can we have lights in here we don't have lights yeah. okay yeah, that's fine yeah. Th- there, there was a thing. tabletop without a pile of coke on it yeah i agree <laughs> she was just cleaning Somebody... up the loose ends guys everybody else had already coked themselves out it, it s- swipe it or snort it i don't care i just want another the shot <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she's uh, he he kills this woman, and then he sees Jennifer Beals, but he sees like the actual Jennifer Beals character, who is just right. like who the no, fuck it, are it you? Really, is Jennifer Beals? Yeah, it's Jennifer Beals playing herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just hanging out in New York. He call he starts saying like this girl's a vampire. Get away from her! And security and, is like and given the that fuck out actually here. they were at the club. I was kind of disappointed I didn't get to see her flash dance. <laughs> hey. Thank you. 
Just a, instead of water, just like a bucket of blood comes down on her, like the brood. It's like uh, Flash Dance meets Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know you want it to happen. It's what we've always wanted. But Nicolas Cage at this point is like, he, he, he just wants someone to kill him, which he rips off a piece of a fence and is running around finding people to take it and stab stab him with it. Again, real people. <laughs> But this is also, just before we get to that, this is the part where they make it 100% obvious that she was never a vampire and they never slept together. Yeah, she's like, I don't know who you are. She's like, Peter, right? How have you been? Yeah. (laughs) This is where we find out that we find that Alva's brother is the Hispanic Knight Rider. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> He's that sweet Trans Am ba-dum, Firebird. Ba-dum, ba-dum. Got his own kit. Bottom. Bottom. <laughs> Keep going, Steve. Bottom. Yep. Bottom. Yep. yep. We got time to kill. Go ahead. Bottom. Yep. Bottom. Yep. Bottom. Okay. Bottom. All right. Bottom. Yep. <laughs> and now Cage is. Cage is like is talking to a lamppost. It's I thought it was just like a building corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah like something like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Huh. And uh, we we see what he thinks he see what he thinks he's doing is talking to his therapist, but he's actually mm-hmm. just talking to the corner of a building. It was at this point, <laughs> Patty noted to me, "Yeah, he's cuckoo for cocoa puffs." Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. This again. This is. This is the peak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he tells the service, he's like, listen, I just want to find true love. And she's like, oh my God, what a coincidence. My next patient <laughs> also wants true love. <gasps> yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. she'd be perfect for you. I don't know why I didn't set you guys up years ago. Because ah. this is a totally normal thing insane. that a therapist would do. Because <laughs> it's not... It's in his head. <laughs> You're not dreaming this at all, Nick Cage. This is real. So did anyone notice who uh, who was playing uh, the the girl? Uh, I think her name was Sharon or Shannon or something like that. This imaginary no. girl. Yeah. Actress Jessica Lundy. You may nope. also know her from possibly the greatest movie ever made. 1997's Rocket Man, where she played Julie Ford. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you know, the Harlan Williams vehicle Rocket Man. The Better Rocket mm. Man movie? Wait a se- Oh my god, shut your damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this girl this girl comes in, her name is Sharon. He says like, Sharon, what a beautiful name. It's incredible, really incredible. Oh, there's just this one thing. I, I raped this girl at the office the other day. <laughs> well, I did rape someone a couple nights ago. Girl at the office, I just lost control. It's just a little id release. No use to worry. I just thought I should tell you. Okay. It's a load off my mind. Oh, yeah. Also, I, uh... Just spit it out, Peter. Well, the fact is I did murder someone last night. I turned into a vampire. It's a long story. Goodness. Peter, 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 people get murdered every day in this city. Do you think the world is going to stop? Yeah, I guess, but the police and everything, what if they find me? Would you stop worrying and just get on with your big romance? He hasn't even been arrested and the big lug is carrying on. Now just get out of here, the both of you. Have a wonderful life together and I will take care of the cops. I murdered my pool boy last night after fucking him. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that'd be a great subplot. (laughs) (laughs) That's how come she couldn't meet the the real uh, therapist couldn't meet Peter Lowe's because she was busy hiding a body. (laughs) Yep. So what I love here is Cage leaves with quote unquote Sharon. And they're already arguing, (laughs) already bickering like a gold married couple. They get when they get to his doorstep he's like i don't even want to talk about it anymore why did you become a vampire why did you become a vampire (laughs) listen i'm a vampire just gonna deal with it okay oh you hate my guts you want to leave fine and this is the part where it really drove home for me 
that this is American psycho, but with a Nosferatu. Because he, the way he's seeing everything, that's not kind of that's not there, but it's there to him from his apartment to his therapist, very much in line with how the end of that book goes. Yep. But spoiler alert. this is the this is the yeah spoiler alert for American <laughs> spoiler alert Psycho. for a book that came out thirty years nineteen ninety one yeah. <laughs> Some of us aren't fast readers, Nathan. <laughs> So he is, uh, he gets in his couch coffin, but the brother has found out where he lives, Alva's brother, because yes. they've been waiting outside. So he comes in, he goes into the door uh, after him. Uh, the brother lifts up the couch, sees him, and Nicolas Cage holds up the stake, and the brother just fucking stakes him. Because Nicolas Cage doesn't want to be a vampire anymore. When, when the brother comes in, He's got a tire iron yeah, in his yeah. hand. He's going to waffle Nicolas Cage. With it, and then he drops it yeah. yep. as he wakes him up. Yep. He puts the weapon down. Oh, yeah. After he uh, stabs Nicolas Cage, I'm like, you better grab that tire iron or otherwise the cops will actually have something. Cause other... <laughs> Their handprints are all over yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. say better dust the place down. And then uh, when the cops come in later, it's like, oh, my God, this guy was – someone must have broke in here and put – Dark blackout curtains up and jerked off on everything. What the fuck is going on in here? Oh god, there's a corpse under this couch. Just another vampire death, boys. Bag him and tag him. <laughs> That's right. Auto erotic is fixing. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how the movie comes to an end, is Nick Cage getting stabbed by Alva's brother, and the last image we see is of imaginary Jennifer Beals. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Well, and the New York skyline, of course. Steven Izzy, I'm not even going to bother asking, but I'm going to say, obviously, you recommend this movie. Oh, obviously. fuck yeah. Uh, this should look, be required watching. It's wow. secretly genius. I can't believe I hadn't seen this movie until about, what, three or four years ago? Yeah, about that. And I've seen it like six times since. It <laughs> is incredible. Nathan? <sighs> just, just look up Nicolas Cage's greatest hits from it on youtube save yourself some time well i'm gonna i'm gonna be the uh, i'm gonna join i'm gonna join the majority in a way i think this movie is insane this movie is ridiculous this movie is bonkers this movie is fucking everything you expect from Nicolas cage in this kind of uh performance really had that having been said i was entertained from minute one <laughs> never a dull moment watch it and be prepared to be like what for the entire runtime it is it's very much a ben and arthur-esque experience (laughs) in that it has to be seen to be believed but once you've seen it and you have the ability to believe it you never have to see it again well i've seen it three times say disagree (laughs) one time Oh, Vampire's Kiss. Watch it. Watch it many times. Nope. (laughs) So we are going to take a break, and we will be right back. What were they thinking? What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. Podcoin! Don't we do something with Podcoin? We do something with Podcoin, actually, Izzy. Uh, If you go to Podcoin and and download the Podcoin app and put in the code uh, WWTTPD, that's the What Were They Thinking Police Department, you'll get 300 bonus Podcoins just for signing up. And what is Podcoin, Nathan? Well, it's an app on your phone, you know, know, your Android device or your Apple product that lets you listen to podcasts and get paid for it. What? 
Huh. Yeah, paid for it. You can get paid for it. You can get money for it for yourself. You can earn money towards gift cards. Or if you're feeling particularly philanthropic, you can donate to charities. Uh, start listening. I mean, you're already listening to podcasts. You're leaving money on the table if you don't get this app. I can pay my therapist with that. Pick that money up off the table and sign up for Podcoin today. What were they thinking? And we're back. We are back. Uh, gentlemen and ladies. Yes. Uh, I guess everyone knows what time it is. It's, uh, it's time for the low haiku. 17 syllables that perfectly encapsulate the cinematic delight we've all taken in. Mm. Now, Stephen Izzy, as our guest, would one of you like to begin? I've got one. Okay. A little f- informal for NPR, <clears throat> but proceed. Excuse yes. me, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have one. Okay. Oh, thank you. Academy Award. Yes, that's right, he has one of those. Can't get it back now. Oh god, I forgot about oh that. Oh my god. <laughs> Izzy, do you have one as well? I'm, I'm so sorry, gentlemen, I don't have a little haiku. Okay, well, would you like to sing a song? Nicholas Cage, cause he's Nicholas... Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Perfect, that was beautiful. Nathan, do you have a haiku you'd like to read? Yes. <clears throat> it would be weird if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's been several times when I almost haven't. Oh boy. Behind the but scenes. But not this time. Patreon this exclusive. Time. Patreon exclusive. I don't think you know how that works. Nope. Neither of us do. <clears throat> I don't get the hype. This is really just bad, bad. Nick Cage couldn't save. Boo! I am clapping there's, the there's, artistry and agreeing with the opinion. There's no, there's no booing I'm, on NPR. My, I'm sorry. I, yeah, that is I dis- way is a, too much energy. I, this is a safe space. I disagree with what you say, but I will protect you the death. You're right to say it. I appreciate that. Steve, do you think this is some kind of uh, crazy roadhouse, like a prairie home companion or some shit? <laughs> oh, oh, delightful. I see what you did there. Hey, oh. welcome back to Force Getting Cut Rag here on 98.4. Oh, calm. All right, well, I'll just read my haiku now. Oh, you have one, do you? Yes, I do. Excellent. We were wondering. On the fly. <clears throat> crazy Nick Cagey. I would like... I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! Ah! Thank you. Ooh, watch that time fly. (laughs) You've heard our opinions on this podcast. But you know, we always say... Don't take a word for us! Yes, as uh, as Steve uh, just uh, stole moments ago. <laughs> Don't take our word for it. Let's look at the, the Rotten Tomatoes, the old Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, surpr- I am surprised by the uh, fact that the critics are at a 61% and the audience is lower at a 53%. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, as always, Steve and Izzy are going to review the reviews. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the, the audience reviews. Let's go through the critics first. Um, so from Variety Staff, that's a terrible name. Uh, you know what? I've already Whoa. disregarded this guy's entire review. <laughs> based on based, his name? Based on the name of the company which he works for. He oh, made I thought that was his decisions. name, Variety Staff. Maybe that's his name, his Variety name. Staff. Okay, you know what? His parents he works made for terrible time. decisions. We need to end that bloodline. <laughs> Zero stars for this review. <laughs> I haven't even read it yet. <laughs> Problem is that Cage's over-the-top performance generates little sympathy for the character, so it's tough to be interested in him as his personality disorder worsens. Mm, Variety, you make terrible decisions, like keeping your name. I feel like Alva is supposed to be the person we cling on to 
Yet we're still she's mesmerized by She's Mike. in like three scenes. But she's our everyman. She's the one who she's the vic she's one of one of his victims. I mean, <laughs> like there's the poor cocaine girl. There's all the chicks that he's been fucking and then ditching at museums. Yeah, the the dead girl. It's just the one. <laughs> Just the one museum ditch. You don't. You don't know about the. No, there's one dead chick. There could be fifteen girls waiting at museums still for him. What about those pigeons and cockroaches? <laughs> I can only assume the stuff that happened is the stuff that was filmed. Nathan, would you like to read a review? <laughs> yes, I have one that actually might go well uh, for Stephen Izzy. Jonathan Rosenbaum from the Chicago Reader writes. Better name already. What? What really? makes this worth seeing is Cage's outrageously unbridled performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's the only thing that makes this thing worth watching. The other side of the coin is Karen James from the New York Times, who almost says the same thing, but at the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> the film is dominated and destroyed by Mr. Cage's chaotic, self-indulgent performance. I think Karen needs to get laid. <laughs> Sounds like a woman who's not been laid for a while. Got another one there, Nathan? <laughs> yeah, uh, Peter Travers from yeah. Rolling Stone. Oh, that hack. <laughs> he writes, What this movie needs isn't criticism. It's more like a stake through the heart. Boom! Told you. Mm. Along the nose. Hack. I think that uh, he just thinks with his penis, maybe he needs to get together with Karen, because all he can think about is hard wood. Penetrating. <laughs> J.C. Massick of Pop <laughs> Jesus Matters. Christ Massick. Yep. Says, as vampires kiss on spools, the lead character wavers in and out of this in and out of this accent and a wide variety of voices, seeming to give every role Cage has ever played, or would ever play, past, present, and future, equal vocal time in the film. You know, okay. I'm gonna agree with that just because he said it should be on the podcast unspooled. I don't believe he said that. Um let's read it again. Just be just be uh, saying, no. Maybe. Nathan, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, well, Brian Orndorff, who I'm pretty sure is Paul's brother. I hope so. Writes. It's wonderful. (laughs) Nope. He did not care. It's a rotten review. A hundred minute long piece of performance art masquerading as a moody, silly indie switchblade. Rarely impresses succumbing to overwhelmingly sluggish filmmaking decisions and a permissive attitude that robs the picture of its, well, bite. Uh, uh, <laughs> false is 104 minutes also put the thesaurus down we get it you think you're smart cool your jets wait wasted your life getting an english degree Ooh, what are you gonna do study next art history if you want to talk about people that think they're smart we're about to go into the audience review oh, oh dear shit. red l Gives it two stars. He says, I read that Vampire's Kiss is now a cult film. I guess I'm not in that cult. <laughs> you know what, Red L? We wouldn't have you anyway. Two stars for you. The I L stands what. for loser. <laughs> is it Red L because he looks like a dog's dick? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Red L, get at Lugs us on stick. Twitter. Lipstick, whatever. <laughs> I, I really hope one day one of these Rotten Tomato audience reviews hears us making fun of them and gets at us on Twitter. So, that would be it's, fantastic. It's Red L, brother of Jarrell. <laughs> Nicholas Cage, <laughs> Superman. It'll be it'll be like uh, Yui Bowl, but way less important. <laughs> no, I think I think. Wait, did you say audience review? I think way more important. By the way, guys, you're no longer blocked for Uwe Bowl because uh, he, has he has a new, a new Twitter t- account. Well, we oh can fix that. <laughs> yeah, we can probably take I, I care of that. I believe it's under Uve Bowl Raw 2, the bulleting. Yeah. yeah. Nathan, what do you got for audience reviews? Uh, Kevin M.W. writes, Nick Cage plays a snooty New Yorker who believes he may have been bitten by a vampire, believes he may be turning into one himself, or an already over-the-top, and that's where the fucking thing cuts off. I, I don't know. Alrighty. All right, so he took his mescaline and passed out halfway during his review. That's what the M and MW stands for. <laughs> Man wasted. You know what? Uh, I'll finish my review of you when you finish your review. All right, buddy? <laughs> Get back to us on that. Izzy is just digging in this, this week. <laughs> uh, Izzy likes judging. 
I was on horse judging in high school. I was born into this. <laughs> uh, Christopher M. Uh, gives it four and a half stars. He says, shits and giggles, 10 out of 10, would bite again, meme gold. <laughs> Well, he's not, he's not wrong on that one, because this movie has generated a, a few, hasn't it? I yeah, think uh, yeah. he, 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 he made a mistake, though. He spelled GIF, M-E-M-E. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, a GIF he can be a say. meme. I mean, meme is not just no longer just pictures with text over top of them. It's just anything that's, you know, used to express a reaction on the Internet. At least that's what I've taken mm-hmm. it. Are you saying now it's a lifestyle? It's yeah, it's a lifestyle, not a choice. <laughs> no, you be there. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll just throw this one out too, since I got it here. Connor F gives it two and a half stars. He says this is either the worst movie ever made or sheer and utter brilliance. It's sheer and utter brilliance. You're correct there. Don't question yourself. Because because Braden A writes Braden Braden. Terrible story. Acting, writing, hard to watch. Only redeeming quality is that it was so bad it makes you laugh. One star. Brayden, you'd be better if you dropped the B off of your name. <laughs> Go get a job, hippie. Or, conversely, if you spelled your name correctly, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy, if he dropped the B off his name, would you say he would be electric? <laughs> I don't know about that. He needs to prove himself to me. Awful. Perhaps in some sort of Mortal Kombat! <laughs> there we go. Let's get Brayden in a cage and see who wins. <laughs> the people I spend my time with, Mike. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Oh my god, are Johnny Cage and Nicolas Cage related? <gasps> What if Nicolas Cage played Johnny Cage? <laughs> Genevieve R. <laughs> gives it three stars. Genevieve and her rating Raiden. is simple. I'll give it three stars because it advertised itself as both horror and comedy. <laughs> 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 and that's my last one. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I think that's it for me, too. All right. All right well, before we move on... Actually, let's move on to the to the hint ski for next okay. week first. So Ooh. what do you got, Nathan? <sighs> Well, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, no. <laughs> it, it's it's gonna be obvious who it is, but obviously not gonna be obvious as to what it what is the movie is. Okay. <laughs> oh my god! I know what you're what it is. So there's your hint ski for next week. There you have it, Stephen. Izzy, you guys have a podcast. <laughs> and how? Okay, cool. So anyway, where can you find us? <laughs> you know, Stephen Izzy, tell us all about your podcast and where we can find you. Babe? Ah, well, our podcast is Everything I Learned From Movies, where we discuss our favorite movies that some people may consider bad. I'm looking at you two. Questionable, All the way out there in Canada. Uh, But we genuinely love and think are awesome. And Steve, where can you find us? Well, we're on all the podcatchers under Everything I Learned From Movies, uh, but our home base is eilfm.podbean.com. And of course, you can just hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at EILF Movies. That's everything I learned from movies. Uh, coming later this month, we have a pretty big little interview celebrating <gasps> Nick August Cage. Secrets, secrets, and lies. <sighs> Wait, just secrets. Oh, and of course, uh, if you want to go to frankieandmur.com because you only like the finest aromatherapy and, and spray essential that bitch oils. away. Yep, spray that yeah. bitch away and use the code UNTIDY to save 15% on your purchase. And orders over $35 ship free. I want to thank Stephen Izzy. Thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for oh, being thank on. Thank you for having us. For more times than Mariah and Josh Kotsabasakis combined. And uh, thanks, Mike, for being in the audience. Hey, thanks for Woo! having me. Yay, Mike. Give, give yourself Ow, a Ow, take it off. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. <laughs> he's, he's patting himself on the back. Okay, fair enough. Thank you for the visual aid because we cannot see. Hey, it. it's not the first time the we've had to explain visual things on this podcast, S- specifically Mariah's penis. <laughs> so that having been said, um, Montrose is, is he around yes. right now? Get him right here. <clears throat> Hello, it's good friend Montrose Minkington the Third here, and um, I just want to go on record to say that I didn't much care for this. 
this movie. No, don't don't really care for people uh, affecting pretend and fake British accents. It's just it's just not cricket. That being said, tune in to Montrose Monkington TV on YouTube, where you'll see this delightful British chimp whose accent is not put on in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Montrose Monkington III Esquire and Friends. Uh, and you can also follow me on Twitter at Montrose the Third. That's the number three R uh, D. Uh, I am famous for my one takes. Thank you. More later. Oh, I'm surprised Montrose Jr. didn't make an appearance there. I thought they left him well, in California. Well, he was left in California when we moved to Utah, but... Uh... Actually, Steve, I felt really bad for him. He was all drunk, hanging out in the basement. So, I mean, I haven't tradition. unpacked him yet. That's I'm his, sure he that's his default the setting. Box. He's in a box somewhere. But, okay. yeah, I, I brought him. I'm sure he's running there somewhere. Wait, who's that over on the shelf? Hello, hello, it's me, Ben Monkington. Oh, that's that boy, oh, your cousin. Yes, I is. Ben, it's been so long. How have you been, Ben? Oh, I good. I just want to say good luck, Ben. Hey. You are a delight, as you were when we were children. <laughs> the, the monkey shines we got up to. Oh, monkey shines? I love that movie. Oh, right, with that Jason <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the chap from Chicago PD. Why am I surrounded by monkeys? <laughs> let's let's go get a pint, Ben. It's been too long. I'm already full ahead of you, mate. Oh, I got some catching up to do. Thank you. More later. <laughs> well, after that happy reunion, we uh, we come to the end of our this here podcast mm-hmm. episode. Yep. And uh, Nathan, I was wondering if you. You were feeling inquisitive. Well, I got some questions. Yeah. Now, in a movie that mm-hmm. is that looks like it should be a, a dark, satirical take on yuppie culture, mm-hmm. but it has Nicolas Cage essentially, uh, I don't know, masturbating for the lack of a better term in an acting sense throughout the entire thing jerking the curtain jerking right yeah and with this movie underutilizing the bright shining point of running man as well as being an obvious canon prequel to joe's apartment Mm-hmm. With all that stuff going for them and what they actually ended up putting out, I just have to ask. Go ahead, my man. What were they thinking? Plus, I was horny. Hello? Is anybody here? Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm coming. All right, I see you liked my bell over there. Yeah, it's a nice bell. Um, do you have any games or something that we could play just to pass the time? I think I've got exactly what you're looking for. Missing Role Player Found brings you another odd adventure in Odd Doggies, where characters from our SAO campaign and a special guest from Lit Gaming Arena play a Dungeons and Doggies module in 5th edition. Join us every Sunday for the next part in this awesome adventure, up until we go back to Sword Art Online Odd this September. It's time, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple brews, baby. We love good movies. We love the bad ones, too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh, yeah. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da. 
Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes a gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy with your friend Stephen Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com